So today we have a special guest, a very good friend of mine, ladies and gentlemen, none other than... Hello, Fredo. Hey, Tara. Mr. Jason. How are you, my friend? Kalia. Oh, I can see myself. <laughs> Morning. I mean, afternoon. You look quite or good evening. I, uh, I think we're very... I mean, we're filling, up, well. we're filling up the frame. Um, <laughs> But I think we look good. Hey, bro, how are you doing? How are you, my friend? Good. This one actually makes me a little nervous. Why? Because I know you. Because we know each other. Oh, because I'm going to expose yeah. you. That's why. I'm Bang. Editing. Coming with the truth. I'm editing. I'm coming with the truth. All your followers are going to know now. It's crazy because it's this weird thing where when you know someone well. Yeah. You always feel like... Because I know a lot of the answers to a lot of the questions, right? Yes. You feel like... Like if you... You, you know, there that weird line. Yeah, yeah. Where is yeah. it? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but anyway, we can edit this thing. Let me just fix it now so that we can have more of the guest in. I'll tomorrow answer my phone while you're Yeah, answer your phone. Answer your phone. Yo, if there's a person that doesn't phone me, it's this person. <laughs> Hello, Sviso Nene. I'm only telling you this because I'm, I'm on camera, so whatever Yo. you say is going to be recorded. Name dropping. <laughs> is it the, <laughs> the so Fiso Nene? <laughs> Uh, do you need me urgently, Papa, or can I phone you back? Alright, brother. Sharp, son. How are you, bye. So, Fizo Nene? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know you know that it's actually quite interesting that mm. when Sofiso, when I met Sofiso, yeah. it was at a Wednesday. Yes. And Sofiso was fresh out of Durban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the guy you know now. Like Not the monster. The monster that no, he is now. Monster. He was, uh, like, still nervous of... Like, oh, did that work? Did that not work? You know what I think, though? Yeah. I, I think he still pretends to be that guy. And I feel like he was he was pretending even then. Because you must remember... Sviso, he was big when he... No, because Sviso came into the game when he won, so you think you're funny. Yeah. And he beat Tats and Konzo. Tips was in the same episode. Yeah. Um, Monsters as well. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, yes. No, no, no. Big, big Owens boys. that have done, gone on and done big Big, things. big boys in the game. Um, but I, I think very often we, a lot of people confuse his humility for inexperience, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I never watch those those Fanta things, which brings me to the thing where I'm like, I would never enter, I ended one comedy competition. Yeah. I'll never, I would never do it again. Did you win? I lost. That's why you'd never enter again, because you know you don't like losing. I hate it. Absolutely. Losing is my, uh, it's not my favorite thing. Doesn't. But uh, over and above that, it also. Even even though even if I did win, yeah. I don't think it's a thing. Well, you learn that it's not a thing you can compete on. Because no. I think acts are shit. No, because it's. And a, then people love them. Then you know it's it's, it's a relative. It's uh, comedy is subjective. Subjective. And is um, even more so I think than music, because music is subjective, but at least the genres are clear. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. rock and roll is rock and roll. Yeah. Jazz is jazz. Yeah. Pop is pop, R and B, yeah. etc. Yeah. Um, but with, with, with comedy, so I I've been trying to say to people, take you know, think about comedy like music, because I'm very frustrated when somebody says, Oh, I heard this comedian, he upset me, I don't like comedy anymore. Then I'm like, oh, No, I know. Go, you, you don't, don't like, like rock and roll. Rock. Yeah. Hard rock, heavy metal is too heavy for you. Yeah. You need jazz. There's a jazz comedian out there, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Carvin. Carvin yeah. is, is is uh, what you I don't want. Know why I thought of Carvin and I thought about jazz, but I think if there's someone who can strum your yeah. with these jokes, it's yeah, that guy. That guy. No, no, absolutely. But there's a lot of guys that I st I was also. I'm a product of a Wednesday. Yeah. And that was your first gig. Yes. And that's how you guys got into it. Yeah. And now I think a lot of people know the story already, but no what one understood the story of Goliath and Goliath okay. because I think it's covered a lot. Yeah. But what people don't get is they see what happened what's here now i remember nick panicking every wednesday oh okay. all of us panicking every single one. out plastic chairs yeah. because you were unknowns you guys just started your own gig we had no right to start that gig yeah that, according to the industry yeah um we were we were too young too inexperienced didn't know what we were doing yeah and um and, and I think that was still, you know, other people's opinions. I think the more experience you get, the less people's opinions matter. But at that time, the industry's opinion, because we had no um, perspective, we had no context. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they didn't if, follow any rules. Yeah. So if an experienced person tells you this is never going to work. Pissed off a lot of people. Yeah. For yes. a long time. We tried. And now, same people 
speak with uh, in, in reverence to you guys. But I remember yes. a lot of personal people. I wasn't supposed to be paid that early. Yeah. You guys paid me very quickly. That's because you were funny. That was yeah, cool. there wasn't like... At the time, there was this waiting period. Yeah, yeah. You guys, but you've always been that guy. You don't... You look for... Explain your philosophy, because I know it. So, for me... I mean, I'm hoping I'm going to explain the philosophy you're expecting here. Yeah, the one um, about the fastest, the straight line to the end result. Yes, okay, yeah. well, that's, that's my... So, so my, my philosophy has always been... Some people would, would call it a shortcut, but it's not a shortcut. Mm -hmm. It's the most strategic route, so... Like you know how you use you use ways. Yeah. Uh, most of us don't use ways because we don't know where we're going. We use ways to find the Avoid. best possible route yes. because the destination has many you know yeah. many different routes. Yeah. And I've always been the guy that hated traffic. Yeah. So why would I why would I sit in traffic if there was a, a, a more efficient route? So instead of yeah. an easier route, I'll say an efficient. Yeah. Uh, a more a more efficient route. Yeah. Um, and instead of instead of just you know jumping in the queue where everybody yeah. else was. So uh, you know I am. I'm the guy, you know when you get to the ATM and there's two ATMs and one queue and nobody's at the one ATM, everybody's in the queue at the yeah, other one. Yeah. I'm the guy that goes and tests Just the check. empty ATM. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and 50% and, and of the time, um, I also then queues half, cause half the queue to come to that ATM. But it's also a very good hit rate. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know no, it's I mean? fantastic. It's a good hit rate. Where are we going? Uckles. Uh, well, you invited me for a failed diet, and no, but it's it's echo, the guest's echo, choice. Yeah, echo, echo. Was, no, here. but if you say go, go straight. Like, yeah, we don't go tackle. You wanna, if you're gonna eat a failed diet, you don't wanna arrive sweaty. You wanna walk with the shortest possible route from the door uh, to the place, and <laughs> yeah. and you can't eat a failed diet uh, in a formal setting. We must sit in the food court. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. No, we'll have yeah. the chow. Yeah, My thing show. is. So I, just to set perspective, mm. so a lot of the things, there's also another problem about interviewing your very good friend, is that you might skip things. Yeah. So to set perspective, yes. me and Jason, I spent the most time with Jason outside of my family yeah. and before I met my wife. Yes, uh, who I introduced him to. By Crazy the way. times. Yes. Yeah, he was there. She's way out of his league. Way out! She's way out of Got his league. Got her pregnant, shop! They didn't even wait. Because I believe in Alfred. <laughs> Yes, you actually have. From the beginning, he, we met at um, Carnival City, right? Yeah, with my fedora. It was, it was Carnival City. Yeah, yes. with my fedora on. Yes. You were in comedy for eight months. I was literally fresh. And the day we met was the day I got my first paid gig. It was March 2012. And Is that it? I remember that date because of... Um, because it was the day, the first day I ever got paid in comedy. Weird name. From we ever got paid from from Joe Parker. Yes. And to give you context for that, Joe Parker, legend, uh, yeah. has a legendary comedy club, Parkers at Monte Casino. Go check it out. Yeah. Um, but the kind of rule of thumb was you're not allowed to call yourself a comedian until Joe Parker has paid you, uh, and that was basically the the nice uh, barometer for, yes. for where you were. And that is the first time Joe Parker ever paid me. So to 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 even go even deeper, my example is. Yeah. Everyone wanted to be paid by Joe Parker because then you felt like you were a comic. Yes. And Jason and him paid me immediately. Joe Parker paid me two years after yeah, Jason yeah. started to pay me. How long? Two years later. Two years. Best thing that he's ever done for me. Where do you where do you go on the lineup at Parker's now? I'm a headliner. What? Headlining. Oh, okay. Just yeah, so but it, it wasn't a thing of Joe has a weird thing. Joe makes you work for it. And that time he made you work for it. Which, well, which, I had to work for it. Which, uh, I mean, I hate that I'm admitting this on camera, but which is a, a big lesson I learned from Joe. You know, in the beginning, we, we, as I stated, we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. Um, but uh, what, what Joe's thing did is it, it, it only paid you when you were sure you wanted to be a comedian. Yeah. I think we paid a lot of people just because they were funny, yeah, not yeah, because yeah. they were a comedian. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the big lesson. So would I have uh, made the barriers to entry slightly higher possibly yeah listen look at the people that found their way into being professional comics yeah out of you guys as well there yes. was a lot of Luisa Madinga first time ever at a Wednesday a yeah. Wednesday first Alf time he ever performed in life yes. was at a Wednesday. first paid act yeah. a Wednesday yeah. Alfred Adrian there yeah. was who else is this is a whole bunch of people <laughs> Sophie so Nene came here we didn't know who that bro was uh, Skumba 
first ever English show. Skumba Shlope, first ever English show on Wednesday. Yes. That was those ever those days you were still collaborating with C4. Yes. Crazy, yeah? Yeah. It feels like forever ago, but it's eight years ago. Yeah, yeah nine years this year. Nine years. Think about, is it in here, bro? I think, let's go around, because this looks a bit dodgy. Oh, there's ones are upset. People like hooting at Hondas, I don't know why. <laughs> it's sick. They don't hoot at me. <laughs> no, hoot at you is the way you drive. Funna. That's very true. I'm the hooter. Listen, the so hooter. so that's that that was the interesting part. Yeah, also, true. people, we think about it as only nine years, because so much has happened for you guys. You guys had comedy clubs. Yes. Official comedy clubs. They went from... Being these colored ones that starting just their own thing, Vurvai to Melrose Arch. Yeah, yeah. To to which uh, is a mind uh, fuck. Let's be honest. To to the most what did what, what what did we what did we call it? Africa's premium comedy club. Yeah, and it was wonderful. It was a wonderful space. And then go okay. Well, we can still talk about Goliath all the time, but we yeah. must also talk about Jason. That's what yes. this thing is about. Yes. And, uh, catch his chow and probably the shade there. We don't come the back and eat and then have another conversation. Because I don't know if it's gonna work like this. You never know. We can come sit in the parking lot and chill. That's the idea. I'll have a date in the car. Let's buy yeah, a takeaway. It's a car date. Yeah. 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 So so I'll put this thing again. You can't see us at all now. You'd be surprised how well this thing picks up low light. Oh no, I'm sure. But I'm sure Shocking. you have to change the setting though. Uh, it's what? got a great uh, auto let's park on the. L hey, you know what? They've moved this food court. You're right, actually. Sorry. I don't know what let's, I'm doing. Yeah, let's park. I'm doing shit. I should have made you go underneath here now, but it's fine. We'll take a long, long walk now. Fuck. It's fine. I need to walk. We've got the same trainer. Yes. He's he told fucking me, me up told there. Me that. Oh, I haven't Jesus. seen him this year. I have not Where am I seen just him anyway? this year. Let's go around and just find there'll be a spot anywhere on this run here. No, no, but he's actually a very good trainer. He's not. He's very balanced. He is. He is fantastic. But in any Would case. You, I can talk somewhere. It's a VIP situation. Okay, I think let's cut it there. We'll speak again when I come back to the to the park. To parking. And we'll chow in the car. Yeah. That's the thing. It's a failed act. A failed act. It's a failed act. Oh. Okay, there we go. It's a bit okay. dark, but it'll get light. So what were you talking about? I was talking about the fact that I now have a steak special. Did they write? No. No mustard. Those are ones. Just so you know, if you want to buy me a steak special, oh, I do it mustard and things. Do you know that, Bali? You don't mind if I don't wait for you? Eat, eat. I don't know that, Bali. Bali knows you, I think. I appreciate that. That's a that's also a little bit of a weird thing. I saw you become famous. Oh yeah, because you've been you've been friends with me since the beginning. Even though I don't think I'm famous. Just yet? No, no, no. I think I'm quarter have two. You, when quarter last, two, when last quarter have two you? famous, not famous on the dot. No, you see, I think that I, uh, even with myself, I, even start here? I don't think of myself as famous and I don't get the attention of a famous person, so I always mm. feel like, nah, no one knows me. But I am in a space where a lot of people don't say things, so they self-preservation kicks in people don't want to be bar for you yeah yeah i'm there but it's not fame yet you can you walk through the mall in pe without people stopping you? no then you're famous my friend Fair that's enough. what that's called <laughs> yeah i know you from before you were famous and then you were doing a lot of ads yeah that was when you were fresh out of your first business yeah so before i did comedy i did oh yeah sorry you gotta take it back mm. and put it in again now yeah. Before you did comedy, what were you doing? I owned an insurance brokerage that went horribly wrong. Yes. And I lost everything. 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 Like, you'll only understand how much you can lose when you've lost everything. So they came after you, yeah. it was bankruptcy. Well, still after me. I still have a, I still get anxiety when I get a private number on my phone. It's still coming after me. Yo. Mm. Mm -mm. And so liquidations of that's gonna take years. And and so because it was a successful bro. Uh, yeah, in, initially we we, yeah. we 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 started. We had good good times. Yeah. And so after that, how did you make the jump from business isn't working, it's all fucked to I'm gonna become a stand-up comedian. So I um, I started MCing. 
when I was in varsity. Ah. And um, worked for multi choice. There was a mic at one on one of the rigs ah. that we used to use for promotions. Yeah. And uh, everyone was scared of the mic because we didn't have to use the mic. And then I was like, I mean, let's just try this thing. Ah. And then I got picked up by a guy who trained me in a um, uh, what do you call it? A um, a patented selling technique for uh, retail. Yeah. You must answer sorry. your wife, my friend. Is it a private number? Don't no, answer. no, no. It's a private number. Private number. <laughs> Goodbye. Sorry. Nice. I haven't done this in a while. That's why. Oh no, no, it's all good, my friend. Mine is That's why I'm um, also now at a point where I'm 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 rusty again. Because I believe in, in my, my view on these videos on Fail That Friday, I only do, I don't have to do these things. Yeah. I do, only do it when I can find people that I'm interested in want doing. To. Yeah, I don't, so there's no weekly schedule for it. Mm. But anyway, yes, you were saying? I should have bought two of these, that's what I'm saying. Yo. Is this thing recording? I don't think it is. Yeah, it's recording. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, yeah, what were you saying? What was we it? were talking about you got out of mm. the brokerage. You went to Varsity, the multi choice. So because I, I, I then started working for Macro on the mic every weekend. Yeah. And because this selling technique was so good, uh -huh. generally the way sales volumes work uh -huh. is um, the higher the price, the less the volume you will okay. sell. Yeah. You understand that as a yeah. business person. Yeah. This patented selling technique allowed us to sell incredibly high volumes of high value items. Yeah. Okay. Mm. That explains a hell of a lot that I didn't know before. Because you are... See, comics are good at emceeing and keeping things like There are yeah. guys that are naturally talented at that. And then there's what you have. Where you've got both and there's a... There's a very strong... Very, very, very... Um, how could I put it? Very strong influen influential way of doing things. Like, mm. you, you're convincing. That's the thing. Well... I've seen you MC so like things you convincing. That's it. So firstly, MC and comedy, completely different skill sets. Mm. Most people assume that because you can do one, you can do both. Both. No, that's not true at all. That's In fact, that all. that's why so many people complain about fantastic comedians messing up the event. Because not all of them are... are 100%. Are 100%. Are so I've, I've been MCing literally for probably easily 12 years longer than I've been a comedian. Mm. So I had 12 years emceeing experience when I started comedy, which also gave me a boost because yeah. I was, you know, confident on stage and, yeah. and and mic techniques and all of those types of things. Um, but yeah, so so with, with the selling of these things, I mean, I used to do crazy stuff. Like, I mean, I would sell a thousand air fryers in two days. Yeah. Um, you, you a know, thousand air fryers? A thousand. So you, you, just to give you context of the value I brought to that business, because um, very often people compare what I used to do to the normal cleanup in yeah. aisle number nine. Yeah. But um, in those days, we used to do 100 TVs a weekend, easy. Because that you were, were still announcing at Macro as well. Was it Macro? No, that's what I'm saying. So at yeah. Macro, yeah. I, would do, I would sell 100 that TVs in two yeah. days at Macro. Uh, as part of a list of things, so that's yeah. just one of the items. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. was and was responsible, literally, that is monthly a... target of millions. Yeah, which you know, yeah, we we used to. I used to do either way. Um, so I kept doing that all the way through my twenties, because uh. I was always of the opinion that if I'm not working, I'm spending, and I'd much rather be making. Uh. Um, so I worked every weekend, even with the brokerage. What helped me as a, as an entrepreneur was having a stable income that I could rely on, um, because although it it didn't pay me much, it paid me enough to cover all of my expenses. It was a yeah. it was a very high paying weekend job that gave yeah. me most people's salary at the time. So you had the brokerage, and then weekends you were still doing macro and whatever else you could yeah. do as an. So I work seven days a week. Mm. Seven days a week. Mm. When the brokerage went under, I stayed on at macro. Mm. Um, and, and that was a very important lesson for me because one of my first mentors spoke to me about the importance of relationship capital. Yeah. And although even when things were going at their best at the, at the brokerage and I didn't need macro, yeah. um, that lesson stuck in my mind and I always treated them well. Yeah. And when I needed them most, they came to the party. So I'll never forget, there's a guy named Calvin Chetty who was the marketing manager at the store at the time. Mm -hmm. My business goes under, at that point I'm only doing weekends and I go, Cal, I'm in trouble, bro. 
my business has gone under. I've lost everything. I don't know how I'm gonna do. So the guy says, "Come and see me." I'll see him. He says, "What do you need? What do you need to make? Mm. Like, what's your, you know, what's your, what's your pain pressure?" Yeah. I write down the number. He goes, cool, give me a day. You know, these, these yeah. levels of authority. I can't just authorize things. Yeah. Calls me back. He's like, okay, cool. Come in from a Wednesday to a Sunday. Instead of just Saturday, Sunday. Mm. Come in from a Wednesday to a Sunday, four hours a day. Yeah. I'll give you that number that you want. Oh, that's cool. So this is an immediate parachute mm. for me. It doesn't allow me to service any of the debt that has been created, but, but it allows me to pay for my car, pay for my cell phone. It allows me to pay for my... My medical yeah. aid. You know, when you have a body like mine, you need medical aid. <laughs> it allows me to pay for my for my medical aid, um, and I was living with my mother, so not much else. Yeah. And then because I'd done all of that MCing stuff, I'd met a lot of people in entertainment, and a friend of mine had opened an, a, a, a talent agency, and he said to me, "Just come and register with the agency and go for auditions and see." Yeah. And that's how I started getting some ads. I got Castle, met Siv. You were an ad machine. You I was an ad machine. And also I had, also had, I should have put that on silent. Ah, don't worry. You can, you, both can leave that, you can leave that part in the... It's my lawyer, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, the, um... Well, what do we have lawyers? You, 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 <laughs> you need to have a lawyer. Have a, if you don't have, have a lawyer. I have a lawyer too. Yeah, no. I know, I'm glad I've never had to use her much, but no, no, I have my, a lawyer, my, my, my friend. My lawyer works for <laughs> Your one works for my, yeah. my lawyer is on a retainer. Let's put it that way. My lawyer is on a retainer. He earns money every month, so now I also find things to do for him. Yeah. Um, yeah. You were still to- telling the story about... Yeah, so I meet Sir. Uh, yeah, oh, and, yes, and yes. that was the important. So, so important the important relationship capital was, was was macro because I looked after them in my time of need. I hadn't burnt that bridge. They were there yeah. for me, yes. and they helped me. Without Indeed. without macro, who knows where I would have where I would have ended. And it was also a great job because that mic gives you a little bit of attention. And if you're anything like Alfred and I, you need attention, absolutely, uh, because confidence is your main thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and then I met Sir on Castle Log, and Sir said to me, "Bro, you're funny. Why don't you do stand up comedy?" And both of you were bitchy Aram at the time. Oh, terribly Aram. I remember this the story you told me about, about Sir with the knockoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, not my G style and a dog on said peed on his jacket. And he screamed at the top of his lungs, not my G style for a hundred and fifty rand knockoff that he bought from the flea market the weekend before. And, and look at like, him now, monster. What and, a monster. And for future reference, that's how you know people's things are fake. Uh, when they don't say get my jacket, when they say bring my Nike jacket. Then you know that's a Bombay Nike. That's <laughs> fake item. You said that guy. in the brand. Aye, 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 aye. You got problems. Yeah. Okay. You got, you got problems. And that's, that's, uh, so then said to me, you're very funny. Try comedy. I said, no. And he said, no, as a hobby. Yeah. I, and I see you like making people laugh. You're going to enjoy doing it. Yeah. And that's why I started comedy. And tell me, how does one get that many ad opportunities? Because when we met at Carnival City, I knew you were already. I told you, I've yeah, seen yeah, you on this yeah, this yeah. ad. Might not have known your name at the time. I was the guy from. Yeah, you were the guy from. Because it felt like for a good five, six years, yeah. every time you switched on the TV, you were in a major ad. Yeah. Online, or on TV, you were the ad guy. What is the magic trick? So, man, it's, you know, these, these questions are very difficult to not feel like one is posting so much way on this. Yeah. yeah. One is. It's it's a difficult one because you know you don't want to say well you know it's it's um it's obviously it's our ability it's yeah but also so but I mean it can't be a thing, mistake. The thing we spoke about in the beginning, yeah. right? One of the things we spoke about in the beginning was you know I like the shortest distance between two points. Yeah. I also very quickly realized that there weren't many overweight charming palette guys going for auditions yeah and when i looked at the way people who were coming to these auditions looked yeah they all looked very similar and when you look similar to anybody else you are now competing with that person and like i said i don't like to join the long queue yes i like the you know most efficient way yeah. and i think that's what that's what works so i chose my spots i chose which auditions i would go for yeah if i knew that they were looking for a classic, stereotypical, thin, good-looking person. You know, I wouldn't go and waste my time. Yeah. But if I knew that charm could win the scene, yeah, I would go. And, and but, yeah, that made my hit rate spectacular. Mm. 
Mm, actually, an interesting I got, point. I got one in two auditions I went for. Fucking hell. Two that time. And for people that don't understand, there's a cattle call for most of these auditions. Yeah. So, I think that's your wife. That is my wife. So, there's a cattle call for these auditions. There are often more than 100 people there. Mm. Very often. And I want to no, tell no, eh? you. Numbers, you get a sticker. Yeah. A sticker with the number. They don't call you by your name. Number, number 187. Yeah. There's nothing that'll bring you down to size like standing in those queues. That's why a lot of comics, you don't like to do it. Yeah. Um, but now, from there to comedy. Yes. How did that happen? So now you at Macro, you... I'm at Macro, joined the auditions. Yeah. I did a few ads. I ended up getting Casa Lager, which was the biggest campaign I'd done to date at mm -hmm. the time. I meet Sif, spend a week shooting Casa, and Sif goes, dude, try this thing. Mm. You're very funny. Try this thing. Mm. I mentioned it to Nicholas over some uh, gentle drinking mm -mm -mm. on uh, Mother's Day. And uh, Nick got a bee in his bonnet, called Tafia from WACT, and made an appointment. Tafia says to Nick, don't waste my time. Because mm. when she heard that us cousins would like to go on the same mm -mm -mm -mm. night, we both have the same surname. She was like, listen, this is not a place. We we, we have jokes on stage. We don't, we don't make jokes. Mm. We're serious don't, about this thing. Don't say you're coming and not come. And there's a that would be this that would become the story of Goliath and Goliath. If Tafia wasn't that hard on Nick, I would have postponed. Is it? Because I said to Nick, Are you mad? He didn't ask me for permission, like, can you make the the thing? He was just like, I also feel like doing it. Next morning he made the call. And I said to him, No, you're crazy. And he was like, No, bro, that auntie's fluked me. We got six weeks. Write your jokes. <laughs> Third of July twenty eleven. My life changed. I did comedy for the first time. It's like a, it's a, it. for some of us that are supposed to be here. If you go on stage and it doesn't feel like this is the absolute only thing you want to do for the for the rest of your life, like breathing, yeah. it's not for you. If you're here for the fame, it's not for you. Mm -hmm. Both yeah. of us here, I could bet, I'd put everything in my bank account today. But both of us here, if you had given us and any opportunity, we would always rather choose to be on stage and even sometimes at a shitty place. Mm. <laughs> mm. That's why a lot of the times people don't get why premium comedians are a shit box doing a stand up because we love doing it. It's, you know, I was saying to my wife, I loved 2019 with all its ups and downs, but there was not a single thing I did in 2019 that I wouldn't have done for free. That's a big... I loved every single job that I took on so much mm. that I would have done it for free because I was having a good time the whole way. But also in your very nature. And years ago, even though we were very close, I'd slept in your house many a time. Very babalas. Mm. Mm. I didn't know. Because we we would travel a hell of a lot. We did... Uh, Jason put me on our first uh, big show. Like we did a Wem Zanzi, mm. well, actually a Wednesday at the Lyric. Yeah, yeah. it's my first big show, mm. first big first stage, paid yeah. show. Um, first corporate gig was Kate booking me for an insurance company that I still feel sorry for. If I pay you for petrol, man, let's run the aircon and close these windows, man. I don't know. Sorry, Cholest man. Cholesterol is coming out my forehead. I don't run the engine rather. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Why? So, um, so the thing I is, I only say the petrol thing to be funny. <laughs> also, he's a dick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, what I didn't know it was a challenge on Instagram. Yeah. Where you had to tell people twenty things about you that people didn't know. Yeah. Kate nominated me. I said whatever I said, and then your one I read, and in there it said. Um, when to gamble is anonymous. Then a lot of shit made sense to me. How so? Because you're a big O. Oh, you, you don't play small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put all the chips in. No, I'm all in. But all the time. Also, another thing hit home. When we were in casinos, we'd never go to the casino. Yeah. So I was like, now I'm like, oh. Yeah. He mark no more sense now. Well, I, I go now. Yeah, you go. You go I go now. now. I, enjoy, I enjoy playing now. Um, but 
it took me years to 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 be comfortable. I went through a through a spat. I don't I don't talk about it often, but yeah. You know, very very often the major impacts in your life come as a result of timing of the thing. Yeah. And I found gambling at a time when everything in my life was crumbling. Okay. And my brain said that I just need this one big win will will set mm. me up. This one big win mm. will will help me, you know, through this. Also thing. young. When you're and young you think that way. Excuse me. Those things very, very often uh, come as a result of um, your 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 current your current situation and more importantly as a result of i had a couple of big wins over like three or four months where as a i mean you you got to think about it like this uh i was probably 26 27 at the time at at 26 this is 2006 mm. i probably made 250,000 rand from the casino in three months made it how yeah. much and spent yeah no i'm thinking i was probably up up to at Shit. the time. So you think that you're invincible. Now oh, that's a fucking terrible thing to happen to you. Yes. Actually. No, it's a horrible thing. Because yeah. you think, oh, this gambling thing is easy. Mm. Um, yeah, and then six months later, I uh, was on my way to a client meeting. I'd been at the casino the night before until early hours with my friends. And I was part of so the timing was the bad things were happening in my life and I was also around people who had liquidity and liked gambling. Mm. So my friends were liquid and they liked gambling too. So I was out the night before with friends. I lost a lot of money. And I lost 30 grand. The next morning I'm on my way to a client meeting and as I'm coming towards William Nickel, the client calls and says, hey, I'm not available. Mm. Now my office is only expecting me in three or four hours. Mm. Um, what else am I going to do? As I'm right here at William Nickel, this is a sign. Because as, as you know, addicts, you will take anything yeah. as a sign. This yeah. is a sign that I must go and win back the money I lost last night because it's now hurting me now. I'm, I'm mm. lost far more than the 250 now. Now I'm about 150 in the red six months later. Fuck. At a time when I didn't have 150 to be in the red. Mm. And um, I go, I lose another 30 grand in the morning. And I'll never forget, I drove out of the casino at 11 o'clock in the morning. The sun is high in the sky. People are going about their business. And uh, my brain just went, what are you doing? What What are you doing? You don't go there to make money. You go to work to make money. Yeah. What are you doing? And I phoned the number immediately. I phoned the number. I went for my six sessions, which which fundamentally just helps you understand it. And I think understanding is the most important mm. thing, gift any addict can give themselves. Is first, just understand why you're addicted to this thing. Yeah. Just don't just say, I'm addicted and the cravings. Understand why. It's, and, very, it's very much the reason why I've... I've stayed away from casinos. Because you know yourself? I know myself. And your personality is not oh, conducive? No, I'm not the guy. Also, that's why I've never touched a drug. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. I, ooh, yeah, yeah. Because no, no, if no. I was on cocaine, this car I'm selling on Tuesday. No, for sure. <laughs> we no, are. It's a problem. My wife won't see me for three weeks. It's it's that thing. and But also that, that personality comes with a lot of ups, especially for you. It's open that vent there, my friend. Oh, no, no, so far so good. Oh, there we go. Um, also comes with a lot of benefits because yeah. you've taken some great calculated risks. No one could have said that Goliath would be this successful. Yeah. Goliath and Goliath, in my opinion, and it's my one, it's a very humble one, mm. is the fastest growing, biggest comedy brand since Trevor. In South Africa, in South Africa, I, I would yeah. agree. Yeah, as yeah, a but, brand, yeah. And at the time, when you looked at it from the beginning, it just looked like three okies, because there was no Kate. Yeah, it was three ones that had their own gig. Jay always had this personality, so if you just met him, you thought, oh, he's full of himself. He just wants to be on stage the yeah. whole time. That was what it yeah. was in your head. Little did we know what cogs were turning in the background. Yeah, because that business then became a little merchandising business then became a show business and then became one of the biggest booking agents in the country. And that evolution there comes from a lot of big, ballsy ass moves. And a bit of stupidity, yeah. you know, because there's a thin line. Mm. There's, a, there's, a, there's a thin line. I, but I've always, been, I've always been of the opinion that if you don't have skin in the game, there's no chance of winning. If, you don't, if you're not in the game, if you're not on the field, um, so you gotta you gotta put yourself in the game, and that's where it that's where it came from. I also had was fortunate enough in my youth to have a lot of 
great mentors and I think a lot of us let those mentors pass by without asking them questions you know for me I've always been if I meet somebody with more experience in a specific thing that I'm interested in than I do I ask them a lot of questions I want to know the importance of mentors is a big thing for you it was never a thing for me and that's it's also it's a fault on my part but you always you always talk to me about this is your mentor here, this is your mentor there. But it's also because of I, I'm very I've always not denied the way I'm good at consuming information. Hmm. You, for example, read a lot of books. No, I watch so, a lot of YouTube. Oh, you just have those books for decoration next yes, to your bed. Absolutely, to try and get those, those days. Those days, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Paulo Coelho. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but because I because I know that everything is in books, all the information you're ever going to need is in books, and because I know that I don't read, mm. so then how am I going to consume this information? Is I speak to people who've read or done? Yeah. And remember, my philosophy is always to shortcut the system. Mm. So the shortest way for me to get from where I am now to having the information I need is very often to have a mentor to ask somebody. Mm. Um, and what I find with mentorship is mentorship is beautiful because it's a two-way street. The mentor and the mentee learn simultaneously. Yes. The mentor, because I believe that the things we speak, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, are, are manifested. The mentor needs to say the things he's saying to the mentee over and over to also remind himself to be cognizant of of some of the the the, the, the cheats uh, to 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 life. But mm. either way, one of the great mentors of my life said to me. To be good in business, you have to get good at making the hard decisions. Okay. Not everybody's going to like you all the time, but somebody's got to make the hard decisions. And that's, in, in terms of Goliath and Goliath, my role was to make the hard decisions, to stand by that decision, and to have a team that backs the decisions based on the track record. Mm. And I had a team that would go, this is crazy, mm. but we in. We did. I was there. So I don't know that me and I wanted to do a show with me and Nick in it. Remember, me and Nick going around and doing stand up because we were very unknown, yeah. really unknown. And um, we then you had a meeting, called us and said, "Listen, let's have a meeting all together." Then on the way, yeah, uh, I was already like, "Yeah, right, we need anchors. I need Jason and Donovan on the lineup." Yeah. And then when we got here, we were on the same page. But in that same meeting, Jay goes. It's going to cost us about 200k. Let's do the whole thing. Book it on Monday. We were booked for 200,000 rand. That was the kind of shit we did. Yeah. And people don't know that now. They go, no. oh, Wednesday made us fuck all money. You lost money on that. I, I don't think I've ever made money from, I think the first time I made money from like a comedy show or a run was my last run of menstruation. Is I've it, always yes. taken a bath. In terms yeah. of, if you see me alive on stage, no, I'm losing money. Yes. Unless it's at a corporate. Yes. Now so that's corporate a different story. have been my, my, my bread and butter. Um, but I feel the risks I took outside of corporate are what have brought me the bread and butter. Yes. Yes, because the one fuels the other. You don't get corporates. Now, people go, we want Jason Goliath all the 100%. time. I get that. That that's a very common thing. You're probably one of the most booked corporate acts out there, and that's because of spending that kind of money and building the thing. I always tell people that the genius behind Goliath and Goliath was that it was three people and then four people and now six people mm. that have one mission and split the work. Yeah. So Donovan would do a radio show, you would do a TV show, and Nick would be doing something else, and. Yo, it spread like wildfire. A win for one was a win for all. Yeah, it spread so like it, wildfire. It, it helped us in terms of the spreading the awareness of the brand, which I think is always difficult. Um, but it also was an incubator. Uh, so between the three of us, we each grew quicker um, because we were always helping each other. We were always giving each other advice. So because it, it now meant that I'm not just a comedian. It meant I'm a guy with advertising experience and I'm a guy that's willing to do the, the, the part of the job that nobody wants to do. Mm. You know, the stacking of the chairs and the setting up of the infrastructure, which, which Nick is good at. Mm. So when you, when you spoke to me, I would leverage Don's and Nick's talents to my advantage and they would do the same. Excuse me, just as whenever we came off stage, 
I'm getting criticism from somebody I trust and I'm able to re receive advice from because it's also you know criticism is a very difficult thing um, you don't want to be criticized by somebody that you don't trust that you don't like um, or, or most importantly that you don't respect I think is, is the biggest one and here I was getting consistent criticism from people that I loved and respected and that I knew loved me and respected me but more important than all of those things I knew that they wanted me to do as well as I possibly could yeah and that just helped the growth and then you got Kate which fucking put everything on steroids I still I felt the there was you guys were steadily going along but I felt the injection of Kate man it's it was like because Kate at the time was working at Media. Yeah, so Kate was, was a public relations officer for, for Crime Media Broadcasting. Jason's sister. My sister and our, and our MD at Goliath and Goliath. She's the boss now. Um, Kate, it was it was a decision that, that, you know, my mom actually came up with it. Don and I were struggling to do the admin part. Kate was hating where she was. She just had a child. Um, and my mom said, listen, between you and Don, why don't you do the numbers? and see because Kate would fit perfectly she just helped Prime Media launch Prime Talent and had a great understanding you know of what we would need and um, I had a chat with with Don Nick was still working a full-time job at the time and had a, a family so it was you know difficult to yeah um, you know all his money was was going towards his family towards that and uh, Don took the risk with me so I said to Don listen this is the story this is what's gonna cost let's split the let's split the cost get Kate the, the sell was simple I just said we're trying to be artists and the nice part about having Kate is a we don't have to give that commission to another agency and therefore we can be friends with all agencies because at the time there was very few booking agencies and you could either work for one of them yeah. or the other and I was like I want to be Switzerland I want to get work from everybody mm -hmm. and the easiest way to do that is to develop my own back office which a makes me the nice guy all the time why because I'm now not the guy phoning you for the money mm. I'm just Absolutely. The guy providing the entertainment. essential I don't have to give so you many the people price don't up get front. That. Absolutely. I don't have to give you the price up front and I don't have to ask for the money at the end of mm. the thing. And if point. something goes wrong, I can just call someone else to Absolutely. call this you're not, person. You're not, you're not dealing with me. Mm. And uh, Kate just took to it like a, like a duck to water, man. And she, yeah. she, she loves it. And I'd go out on a limb and say, you know, I think she's one of the most influential women in, in stand-up in, in the country at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, then you guys that was still and, and people don't get this is that all that work so yeah that sort of blow up happened and then what we never think about is the cost of our privacy right and I've mm. seen you go through it yeah. so I go now you're so you so popular that people love you but you know that thin line they hate you very quickly and you've now been dragged a couple of things already yeah, yeah. you've been dragged how have you been dealing with being dragged in the public? Because I've had one instance where it was rough and it wasn't even rough. Man, a couple of things. Firstly, my mom has a saying and she says, do not complain about the things you prayed for. Uh -huh. And being dragged in the public is a direct consequence of my prayers being answered. Yeah. So I'm not allowed to complain about it. Yeah. There's many things that, you know, all the things I dislike about the position that being a comedian and following my passion puts me in. Mm. I, I'm now, I don't allow myself to complain about it. Now I've just got to learn from it. Yeah. However, it is it is difficult. We you know cancel culture is a real thing. We exist yes, in a time real, where man. people can say the meanest things without consequence, and that's the that you know I was raised on on the basic principle of choice and consequence. Mm. And at the moment, there are no consequences um, for being mean. And it's weird because it goes against the very so so they trying to normally well cancel culture is about taking out the bad guy but there's also this part where the they they're being mean and, and it could be inaccurate yeah because but you're still need, getting cancelled you no know, because nobody needs context anymore yeah that's what social media has done social media means i can read one sentence out of context yeah for my opinion more importantly publish my opinion mm. and that that it's a it's a difficult it's a difficult thing so it, it you know it um, it starts impacting but I think that the best thing I did for myself was to try to not be a hypocrite mm. so I've always had the philosophy that I don't want to have to change the 
type of person I am when I'm mm. with Alfred versus when I'm with Nicholas versus when I'm with my priest versus when I'm with a client versus, you know, wherever I am. I'm always trying to be, I want to just be the same guy. It's yeah. too much pressure. It's too much, yeah. too much work. Yeah. To, to have to be a different human being now you're hiding the fact that that you that you smoke from this person but you can smoke in front of that person yeah and i'm just like i never ever wanted that and i and i and i i always brought that down to if i'm comfortable with it mm. then i must be able to do it anything that i must hide am i should i really be doing that mm. was was the thing now i also do a lot of stuff where you know i speak about my life my choices i speak about my wife i speak about my marriage on stage and i think it's very very open yeah, um, menstruation was very open. brutally open, but what it's done for me—that's his one-man show—is is, yeah, yeah. You got, it's gonna come to show, Max. You gotta check it out. Um, it's uh, what it's done for me is I live by my own rules now. Mm-hmm. I try my best to be the human I say I am. Mm-hmm. You know, David Kibuka who was I think my greatest mentor of all time. Said to me, "Imagine the man you want to be, and then just be that man. Mm. Life is that simple." Life is that simple. Imagine the human being that, that sounds you want very to much be, like David, and then just be that person. When you when you understand it in its intricacy, it's one of the nicest sentences, because it's like, if you want to be the best comedian in the country, then be the best comedian in the country. The best comedian in the country is a guy that works like Trevor worked. Mm. Trevor puts in more work than any of us have, any of us ever will, because he is obsessed with the thing, yeah. and therefore the results. It's funny now because when we were starting out, when you looked at, we still, I still look up to Trevor, right? right? But Trevor was this myth and because he was there, you know? And then we got to meet him. And we got, we both of us were together in Montreal with him. Yeah. And it's not a lie. The oak works, man. No. The brasm still works at a crazy rate, but he's happy to do it. it because he's, his happiness comes from his work. Mm. Then my happiness comes from rum and coke as well. Yes. And my wife. And yeah. the couch and Netflix. You know, no, I mean? no, no. and with him, it struck me that comedy takes the first seat in everything with him. Everything. He would much rather be writing a joke than having a beer. Everything. He's not that guy. But that being said, look there again. Can you imagine being dragged internationally? You, you're on a stage where being dragged is a thing, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, and it is unfortunately part and parcel of what we do. And yeah. so you, what you're saying, you know, it, it's, it is what it is. But no, but what also I got, I got great advice. After the first time I was dragged heavily, I spoke to Euphonic because I was like, let me phone somebody who's been dragged. You know what I mean? Mm. And Euphonic said to me, my friend, please don't worry about what people have to say on social media. He was like, you know the thing with social media, those people are scrolling. They stopped for a second, got involved in your conversation and, and either continued scrolling or got a phone call from their landlord about the money that they haven't paid or they in other words they have carried on with their lives because everybody's yeah. got problems yeah but we think that everybody is sitting down right now and talking about us the scariest thing for me is right now in the world alfred you and i are the only pe- per- people thinking about or talking about you and i nobody's thinking about us right now absolutely okay now you're watching this thing you're yeah. thinking about us but yeah. in real time yeah in real time right now yet we have this consciousness in the back of our minds. We are always so worried about people and perceptions and nobody's thinking about us. No, absolutely. No, because Del- everybody has their own thing. Del Carnegie says it. Well, he said it a hundred years ago. Yeah. The rash on an individual's ass is more important than famine in Africa. That's it. To that person. Sad but true. That's it. So everybody's got their thing. Absolutely. Everybody's got their thing. It's still not. But it's fucking difficult. It's not. It's, it's not a it's, nice thing. It's, but there's also another thing that that this is one of the questions I need to know is that you studied you studied at, at advertising you went to I, I am, studied marketing yeah. yeah yes I am in what, what yeah. is it yeah so you went from marketing mm. and then you did things that I mean that's there's a lot of marketing in what we did but a lot of the stuff you did was self-taught yeah do you still put a lot would you if you have if you had to give someone advice or if you had to go back, would you still go and do the formal studying? Because you've become an actor, proper actor, self-taught, mm, self-taught. comedian, self-taught. Mm. Lots of these business things. There's nothing people can tell you about about, about a phone call with a lawyer. It's, you know, there's no no one can teach you that in school. Would do you still put so, gravity behind going to get a tertiary education? Absolutely. Unfortunately, I, I I do. I wish I wish I didn't. And and the reason for that is. 
A, we're all different. B, we all need different things. But depending on how you receive information, I'm not saying tertiary is for everybody. Yeah. But I'm saying it definitely has its place. If you have some sort of academic in you, yeah. And you have a passion to learn a specific thing, I think it's I think it's fant- I think it's it's um it's an absolute must. Mm. If you are not going to study, I at least think you have to work in environments where you are going to learn. Yes. Our work, the thing that we do, the acting, the, the making jokes, mm. performing, for me, twenty percent. Eighty mm. percent of what I actually do, um, or the importance behind what I actually do, I learned either at varsity or through my corporate work experience. Yeah, a lot of it is your corporate work experience, yeah. my opinion. Yeah, because I think that, and this is goes to something we always speak about, is that. The comedians that are successful come from a business background. Most people, most of them at least, you know, like the really successful ones, the guys that can have uckle wires on a Wednesday, those guys have been, it's come from businesses, you know, like come from, if you look at all of them, they they come from some sort of a formal structure. They are are the the, the exceptions. What you'll often find with the exception is they may not have had to spend time in corporate but their life and their circumstance has given them those lessons that we're speaking about now yeah, yeah. so like you know trevor speaks about his upbringing his mother yeah. his jobs that he had to do before all of those things played a part in where he is now, now. mark lottering worked yeah um, in advertising riyad uh, as a doctor. Studied, became a doctor, but was already doing comedy work before he before he was a qualified. Magic, a little magic work. Started doing magic, but always had an affinity. But comes from a family of doctors. Yeah. So comes from a family that uh, gave him a financial education at least yeah. in house, which most of us uh, I didn't get a financial education at all. My parents didn't understand money, and you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's a case for many of us. I didn't get that. I'm I'm still learning myself. Still making mistakes. Um, but I, I, I agree with you. Also, I think life experience is fundamental to be a good comedian. Especially yeah. if you want to have longevity, understanding the world and understanding people. Yeah. Most important thing. That's a big deal. That's one of the biggest things. But anyway, so thanks for your... Is that it? That's it, man. I'd fun enough. I don't see you enough. I don't I... see you enough either. I, I know you press for time as well. No, but I also, I like this thing that you do. Thank you. Um, and I don't like everybody's one, but I do like your one. And I always wanted to do this, so do yourself a favor and click subscribe is here. Yeah. Click subscribe now. You don't want to miss these. Mine is the most average one out of all of them. This is like You'll be surprised. If you enjoyed this one, this is the worst. So watch everything on this page. Leave your comments and don't tell your friends if you don't like it. <laughs> You'd be surprised because I see a lot of I mean and I I this is something else also I've 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 learned in stand up. Stand up taught me. I was very yeah. selfish. To be a very selfish human. You think of yourself as not selfish, but you really are. Yeah. And then I learned that there's, n- I want a lot of South African comedians to have platforms, on, 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 to be on all these platforms yeah. and grow at astronomical rates yeah. so that we can take each other by the hand. There's, n- there, you know, if I can be on someone else's channel, then that people learn about me and we share that same audience member. It's uh, and it took me forever to get there. It's it's something I've tried to do for a very long time. Yeah, it's something I've always tried to do. It's very very frustrating, um, but it is it is something that I've tried to do and absolutely agree with. Yeah, is I help you, you help me. I'm working for you, you working for me. It's uh, that's it. That's the truth. Anyway, so nothing coming up. You just you just did menst- menstruation. There's mm-hmm. a movie coming, but we can't speak about it. No, Yo. we can. We can now. Can we? Is it out? We can now. I got, the, I got the email last week to say they're preparing some stuff. But yeah, Donovan and I do a little cameo in uh, Vin Diesel's new superhero movie called Bloodshot. It comes to theaters in March. That's so um, cool that both of you in it. Yeah, no, it's crazy. It's crazy. So yeah, it's catch, your, catch. your first, your toes in an international international product. blockbuster. Huge right? in the Asian markets. Eh? Come on. Hey. Come on. You you know the crazy thing is is that Jason is not an actor. Fuck me, you've done a lot of act. I have. It's not my favorite part of the job. I'm, yeah. I don't mind it at all. I like yeah. it. But I think it's not my favorite part because I don't rate myself until I watch it back and I'm like, oh, that's some acting. Ooh, I that's hate fine. it. I hate watching my... The, the most fun I've had was just working with Kasper now because okay. it was a comic. Nice. The guy understood. It's like when when you work with Kagi from the painting yeah. and then 
they have an understanding of how you your yeah, mind yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. But go on a set. No, thespians want a cue Ooh. and a technical this and a you didn't and a, mm, You know, we don't like when you said this word instead of that word. And that's not for comics, man. Give us an outline and let us go. Don't put us in a box. Yeah, and now they struggle. And then the funny thing is, is that a lot of actors find comfort in the in the text. Yes. Mike, no, Mike, that's their anchor. That's, that's yeah. their, the, the written word. That's why it's important for them to get cues and get notifications. So like with us, we love the ad lib. That's what yeah, we love, I love best. Um, but most most proper actors, ad lib is not their thing. That's why they're so great. So yeah. I don't consider myself an actor. I'm a comedian that does a little bit of acting. Yeah, I panic when I get a role. Yeah. I go, yo, I got a role, but you're not. Then they send you this booklet. It's learning all those lines. Whoa! And you get there and then that's just the beginning. And then I look at guys like Glenn and Skulk. No, but those, those are thespians. Those just are so good at it. Study the thing, they love the thing. Glenn taught me I love a lot. Because Glenn, but we did a little thing together. And on the day, Glenn was off script. Glenn was the only one there with no script in his hand. Good day. It's great! It's good day. Great! He did that, what's that, that show with uh, the Junior. Jewish family. Oh, 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 Tully's wedding. No, 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 the, 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 the stage oh, show. Oh, oh, um, how can I forget this? It was an epic show, that. It was brilliant. There's another guy that comes from, from, from the box. Yeah. Also another guy. Yeah, he won, he won an open spot competition at the yes. box. Yes, yes. With Comedy Central, yeah. And look at him now. It's all these guys started Fantastic. there. Fantastic. Anyway, Manier, it's weird because I, 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 in my heart, feel like I'm, not doing enough for my audience because I know everything and so things that I think you know I just fly over yeah if I didn't know you I'd ask all those detailed uh, questions if, if I were to go if somebody were to say give me the highlights package on you yeah the highlights package on Jason Goliath is simple the number one priority in my life is happiness mm. and within that happiness is my happiness mm. I found a space where the happier I am, the happier I can make those around me. It's a counterintuitive thing, like that airline thing about a woman traveling with children. Please put your own mask on first before helping anybody else. They say that because if you pass out, you can't help anyone. Never mind the child sitting next to you or your child. Mm. So make sure that you can breathe, then you can save as many children as possible. Mm. And happiness has been that thing to me. So I treat myself incredibly well. The better I treat myself, the better I treat everybody else. I love myself. I am a responsible personally. I don't make anybody else but me responsible for my, for my happiness. I hold myself accountable for that happiness. And from that, everything just seems to work out. It changed my relationship with money, and I believe that the only thing money affords us is experiences. Mm -hmm. If you are target-driven and you are driven by the rand value, mm -hmm. you are always going to be left wanting. Be driven by the experience that that rand value will give you, mm -hmm. whether that's having a child, uh, getting a specific car, living in a specific house, buying a new shoe. Mm -hmm. It's easier to motivate yourself to get out of bed and go and work for an experience rather than it is to go and work for a little bit extra money. Yeah. It's a weird, weird, weird you know, money also thing. finds ways to get spent. 100%. You know, absolutely. I, yeah. My thing is, uh, and before I let you go, mm. my thing was always, um, you always used to say, this is the thing I learned from you, is yeah. that you speak things into True. existence, right? And people always think of that as a hocus pocus, yeah, a yeah. crystal a way of life. Trick. No, no. But I can scientifically back it up. It's about how you feel. It's because you put these things, positive things out, you tell your subconscious mind that these things are already happening. Yeah. Your subconscious doesn't know the, the reality from the other thing. And so you carry yourself in a certain way. And then these things come your way because you carry yourself in a certain way. And you did things where, because you had quite an international career, you <coughs> Jay has performed at, in Montreal twice. You're one of the very few guys that have been called back. You did that thing for Laugh Out Loud Network. I've never seen that stuff. I don't think it. I don't think it ever aired. I don't think it ever aired. It was done for Kevin Hart's LOL Network, and I, I, network, and I yeah. don't know if it's just in the archive, but there've been some changes there. But yeah, yeah so I did a, a special for them and a special for Comedy Central and you, Africa, which yes. Um, and you just went to you just went to New York for this charity that you work with. Mm -hmm. I've hosted the big show, and it's the second one time. Central, I've, yeah, so I've done New York. I did Seattle and then New York, um, to two different occasions. I've hosted the big show in, uh, which is one of my one of my favorites in Montreux, the Swiss Comedy Festival. Yes. 
Montreal. You guys are involved there now in curating the South. You you involved yeah. with them curating the South African Comedy Festival, yes. the Johannesburg one. Yes. J I C F. Mm. Johannesburg International Comedy Festival. So look soon. out for that. Yeah. Also, the the again everything with Jason Goliath, in my opinion, comes down to how well he manages people. That's your thing. That's your big strength above all of these things. You're a funny guy. Yeah. But humans like you. Even the ones that don't like you. You they know. don't walk away uh, in disgust with you, you know. Like I they... just like you know because I don't. You know my mother and I. Know I speak about my mom all the time, but she gave me such great lessons. She just said, "My boy, there's enough cuck in the world. Eh? Don't create cuck. There's enough cuck that already exists. Now you're creating cuck." And then I'm just like, if I can go through life just making people smile and making people happy, mm -hmm. and if you understand that, you know, everybody wants to be spoken to differently and addressed differently and respected differently, and I kind of, you know, I think my biggest skill is just learning what you like yep. and how you like to be engaged with. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm a halfway guy. Yeah. So I never just take. That's my rule. I never just take. I must give. I love symbiosis, and I love a synergy, and I love the fact that I there's 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 very few people that I I feel overly indebted to because I always try to to give you yeah. more than I'm asking from you. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that's yes. that's those are my those are my basic principles. And that's how you've kept a lot of blue collar friends. Yes, because in Jason's life, you uh, I speak I'm like interviewing for you. No, it's fine. You've I've seen you with you just spoke about euphonic like it's someone that's just easy to call. With the rest of the country, think of euphonic as euphonic. Mm. You've made all these like very influential big time friends, but when I come to your braai or your party, there are some blue collar ones with a gold to uh, my main my gym boys. Because I still see still myself the as same. one of them. I still see myself as the blue collar, not. Mm. not and some of those ones have stories. Oh, they so they said, "Well, we were together when." Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this, this, and this, and that's a nice thing to see, especially like to keep. Certain friends, because what you learn in in show business is that a lot of these friends aren't your friends, most, most of them. And um, it looks rock and roll, but we, me, both of us, we rather watch Netflix at my with my wife. Yeah, yeah, Netflix, my, my favorite. We're place not out here partying at in all in the world on the couch. I can't care. Wife. I stopped going to the opening of everything. Oh Fuck that. But anyway, thank you so much, my bro. Thank Shop. you, brother. Now I'm gonna come and say bye to your wife, and then I'm gonna let you go. Oh yeah, Shop.